So today we're talking about eyesight and challenges with learning the half because of eyesight problems. And we're going to be going through some tips that I've collected from harpists who have struggled with this themselves. And I think you're going to be pretty excited by some of these ideas, especially the last one. So stick around to hear them all. So already learning the harp can be quite a challenging and frustrating thing at times. And that's just if you can actually even see everything clearly. When you've got the added complication of struggling with your eyesight, it can be really discouraging. And I've heard a about a lot of harpists struggling with this. I, I haven't personally experienced it, um, so I wasn't able to tell you from my own experience. So I decided to ask my harp community over on my membership platform and to ask them what they have tried that really works well so that I could shortcut the process for you and give you some advice that has already been tried and tested. <laughs> so um, let's just check. I'm just checking in with my notes. When I look down here, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, so most of these tips are actually from people who have mild to moderate eyesight limitations. Um, so if you are moderate to like you really struggle to see at all, um, then hopefully some of these things will help you. But um, you can listen to the very end because the last one is especially helpful for blind harpists. Okay, let's get started. And as I'm going through, if you have any extra suggestions or comments, make sure you put it down in the comment section below or during the live chat. You can chat to each other. That's really fun too. <laughs> okay, so number one, first tip is to enlarge and darken your sheet music. So you want to be able to see the sheet music, music as easily as possible while you're reading. And one way to do that that maybe you've thought of is to enlarge it but maybe what you haven't thought of is how you actually do that when you're printing your sheet music so you would just set it so that it can completely fill the page and you can even increase it to like 110 or 120 percent and an extra tip is to actually get a bigger piece of paper uh, instead of using a4 or the letter size you normally use go for an a3 a bigger piece of paper and then you can really blow it up nice and big and darkening it really helps too so you can set that um, in your settings as you're printing. Number two. So you want to make sure that your sheet music is as close as possible and also in line with your eyesight while you are playing. So I'm going to show you a little demonstration here. You really want to be able to, while you're playing your sheet music, playing your harp, you want your sheet music to be as close to where you are looking at the strings, like where your eye line is going to. Um, you don't want to be turning your head because then you have to focus again every time and it's very easy to lose your place. Um, so I really like this um, harp desk that I have here. Um, thank you to music makers who gave me this harp desk. I'm loving it because I'm always trying to get my, harp, my sheet music just into this exact spot and now it's attached to my harp so I don't have to have the kind of clashing between the bottom of my harp and the stand. It's just attached to my harp. Um, so that might help some of you. And there's links to the products I'm suggesting down in the description box so you can have a look and get one of these yourself. Another suggestion that people have said on my membership um, harp community is they said they liked a rat stand. So I don't have one of those to show you, but basically what a rat stand is, is the instead of having a tripod at the bottom, it has this like U-shaped feet. <laughs> so you can bring it really close to you and kind of weave those in between the legs of your harp and have it even closer than um, the harp desk if you'd like to try that. So there's a link for that down in the description box too. <laughs> so tip number three is to get some mid-range uh, glasses or spectacles. <laughs> so one of the challenges if you wear glasses is that um, you may have reading glasses for when it's um, you're reading up close and you might have different glasses for when you're seeing far away but when you're looking at the sheet music um, it's kind of a midway between those and it can be very difficult to deal with that. Um, so I have some suggestions for that. The, um, the first thing is you need to make sure that you actually measure the distance between your eyes and the sheet music where it's going to be when you're playing your harp and take that measurement and your actual some sheet music ex an example to your optician when you go to get glasses 
and you can actually ask them to make it work, make the focus work for that distance. You can hear I'm not an optician because I'm not talking about it properly, but you know what I mean. Then you can actually have the sheet music there and you can practice it and they can help you make sure that it works well. And you can do the same thing if you're just getting um, glasses from the store. So you can take your sheet music to the store, have your measurement, know exactly where to hold it, maybe your friend will hold it for you, and you can try the different ones that you're considering purchasing um, to see whether they work for exactly the right distance for playing your sheet music with the harp. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm just about to get into tip number four, but before I get there, I just want to make sure that you are subscribed. If you're enjoying today's video, if you subscribe, then you'll be notified when I put up new videos, and I'd love you to be here for the next one. And also, it will tell you when I'm going live, like today, so you can be in the chat and have fun. <laughs> okay, number four is making sure that you have really good lighting on your sheet music. So you want to be able to see as clearly as possible and lighting make a, makes a huge difference for that. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have any backlight behind your sheet music. This is a problem for me even though I don't have eyesight problems. Um, so no window behind or a, a lamp or anything behind that that could be shining in your eyes. You want to have the, the light shining onto the sheet music. So there's two ways you could do that. The first would be to have a floor lamp that's just going to shine in exactly the right place. And the second would be to have a clip-on stand light. And I've got some links down below in the description box for um, suggestions for both of those. And you want your stand light to clip on here, be nice and st sturdy and actually um, give a lot of light on your sheet music. So hopefully that will help you. And then number five is to have good lighting on the harp strings. So I haven't actually spoken about the strings yet. I've mostly been talking about sheet music, but a lot of you are probably struggling to see the strings clearly too. So I have a fun suggestion for this. So I don't know if you have seen LED lights strips on harps before. Um, so these strips go, you put them down under the, the neck of the harp and they would shine down onto your harp strings. The strip light looks like this and at the back, Am I showing it properly, yeah, Mix? <laughs> On the back, there's this um, sticky stuff. So you just peel this off and you peel it up onto your harp. And um, Megan's going to show you, we're going to clip it in. I mean, turn it, <laughs> turn it on. There you go. Um, so it shines nice and brightly. So the added benefit of this is you look really snazzy and really cool. And people think that you're just doing it to make a statement and to look like an extra awesome hip harpist. But actually, <laughs> it will really help with seeing the strings while you're playing. <laughs> Okay, and the next one, number six, is to use a tablet or an iPad for your sheet music. So uh, people often do this for organizing their sheet music because then you don't have to carry around folders or binders or books with you if you go somewhere to perform, but it actually really helps to enable you to see the sheet music no matter what the lighting situation is because you can adjust the brightness on the screen of your iPad um, and you can put it exactly where you want it, either with a music stand like, or with the harp desk like I have here, or you could put it on a stand specially made for it. Um, but the extra cool thing is that you can also zoom in and you can have the sheet music scroll as you're playing. And you can also use little foot pedals to go backwards and forwards between the different pages. Um, so another one where you look extra snazzy, but may, it's also just gonna help you if you're struggling to see the sheet music. Make sure that you get a full size iPad. You don't wanna get a smaller mini or anything like that because you wanna see it as big as possible. Um, oh, we're about to go on to tip number seven, but before we get to that, I just wanted to ask you, are you enjoying these suggestions so far? And which ones are you gonna try? Are any of them inspiring you? Tell us down in the comments below uh, which of these tips you're inspired to try. <laughs> awesome. Now number seven is to memorize your sheet music. Now this might seem a really obvious example or an obvious suggestion, um, but I know a lot of people have a bit of a mental block about memorizing and that can be really difficult when you're struggling to see your sheet music, but you also struggle to memorize. Um, but one suggestion I can make for you is, um, well, it's really about how you practice. Making it easier for you to memorize is about practicing very thoroughly in very small sections and really making sure you're doing a good job of getting it into your brain. And a lot of people have had, a, had amazing success for, with this when they're using my video lessons. It was kind of like a surprise benefit that I didn't even realize when I was making these lessons, that because we are practicing so slowly when we're using those um, video lessons and so thoroughly, by the time people get through it, they can play the piece 
fluently and a lot of people have actually memorized it without even trying. So I suggest you give that a try if you struggle with memorizing or you want to get better at it. Um, so there's a link in the description box for those as well. And then number eight is to get really familiar with your string spacing and your muscle memory when you're playing. So I kind of want to put my fingers on the harp when I'm talking about it because this is about how it feels when you are playing the harp and this, um, if you can really get good at placing your fingers in the right shapes and knowing exactly where your strings are and how far apart to put your fingers, you don't have to watch your hands as much. You can watch the sheet music or if you can't see the sheet music or the strings very well at all then practicing these skills it will just really help you a lot and that's something else that will really be easier if you use those video lessons because it's practicing very thoroughly and focusing on practicing placing a lot which is very important for getting that muscle memory going. <laughs> um, okay, number nine is try a software program that enlarges and scrolls through the sheet music. I mentioned that with um, iPads but you can do this on a computer as well. So there's one program called Limelighter and that one's quite expensive. Um, so we did a bit of research and well, actually uh, my harp community on my membership platform, somebody mentioned that there's actually a free one called MagnaPi. And this was made by a man whose niece went blind and he wanted to really, well, I guess she wasn't completely blind because she could still see, but it had to be really enlarged. And he really wanted to help her without her having to spend on um, the expensive programs. So he makes it freely available and you can just email him. So there's links to both Limelighter and MagniPi down in the, in the description box. And moving on to number 10, this you can try out software that actually reads out your sheet music to you. <laughs> so this is the one that's especially good for people who are blind, but maybe some of the rest of you would also find this really useful. Um, so there's one that we've heard about called No C Notes the letter C. Again, you'll see it down in the description box. Um, and this is talking about turning your sheet music into a verbal language where it's read aloud to you like an audiobook. So they actually describe what's happening in each measure, tell you about it, let you listen to it, and it's really quite amazing. Um, do yourself a favor and just go through to the link and look at the, the um, kind of demonstration of no C notes, and it's really fascinating. Um, so I think that's a really interesting one. Um, now, I just wanted to tell you an extra little something at the end here. So if you enjoyed these tips and you're just like, wow, who are these people who are trying out these things and getting all these great ideas? It's the people from my membership platform. It's a lovely harp community of people who are sharing ideas and encouraging each other, answering these kind of questions and just sharing their personal experience. Um, so we discuss a lot of of different challenges and give helpful suggestions. So if you want to try that out and try joining the membership, then you can click, I'm going to put this after the live stream, I'm going to put a link right over here. Otherwise you can go down to the description box and hopefully I'll see you there and we can carry on supporting each other. And um, I'll see you in next week's video. Bye. Thanks so much for joining.